This is chapter 5 from the book entitled Isaiah 53 and the Day of the Lord. It was typed by me, but every word is God's. This is God's book, his new book, divinely received scripture, modern scripture. So I like your Bible. What it does is it shows you how to interpret your Bible, rabbis, and don't tell me you don't need it. And way too much preaching of uh, or speaking of man's word versus God's words, and oftentimes with an actual conflict with God. His covenant of friendship rules out a messianic era. World of exaltation? God says, when I deliver my covenant of friendship, you'll no longer be the taunts of nations. That doesn't sound like world exaltation to me. You'll be safe on your soil. But that's not what y'all preach. In direct contradiction of God himself, Toby is saying are adding to and taking from the Torah, reviving something God did away with, the animal worship and sacrificial laws. God said, I don't want your animals eating anymore. Even the New Testament has that. And then adding a human being to it. You realize, Mr. Anti-Missionary, that's what the Christians do with Jesus. Sin free because of his sacrifice of the unblemished lamb. Well, all your people were blemished. Six millions, not all of the Jewish people gathered as one man. For starters, go to chapter, on my videos, chapter 23. There's two parts to it. You'll see what God has to say about you because he put it in his book. Same thing with world exaltation for Jews for Judaism. God put it in his book. It's going to get published. I suggest y'all straighten it out before that happens. And if you think God's not going to get his book published eventually, you got another thing coming, and I will be in Israel eventually. Now, you wouldn't want to debate with me. I can promise you that. Hmm. <clears throat> this is called, chapter 5, the angel of the Lord. Same angel that God spoke through in the burning bush. It's going to teach you about that. And we're going to answer something for Rabbi Rashi. No. Uh -oh. No, I did this one. We must be on six. Bear with me. It's early. Here it is. Angel of the Lord is chapter six. This is a period, chapter 1, verses 7 through 12, with commentary verse by verse as a midrash separating parts of a verse for interpretation. Verse 7. Is this the same one? Oh, okay. Chapter 1 of Zechariah is where Rashi says, this is too enigmatic. It's a dream and a vision. We cannot interpret it. We must wait for the teacher of righteousness to come. And I'm here. And uh, that's the man of Isaiah 53, who is Moshe. And uh, we give the answer to him, but he couldn't figure out. I think this is part of that video, um, but any, in any event, on the 24th day, this is about the angel of the Lord, on the 24th day of the 11th month of the second year of Darius, the month of Shabbat, this word of the Lord came to the prophet Zechariah, son of Berkariah, son of Edo. Midrash, this word of the Lord, commentary. This verse continues with, In the night I had a vision, 
which is not a word of the Lord. The word of the Lord coming to Zechariah means the messenger of the words of God has come to Zechariah, who is the angel of God's presence. And the, in quotes, by God, telling me to put this in quote, word of the Lord. And that's all over the Hebrew Bible and the prophets. He has alighted upon Zechariah to bring a vision from God. The word of the Lord is bringing a vision. Verse 8, in the night I had a vision. I saw a man mounted on a bay horse, standing among the myrtles in the deep. And behind him were bay, sorrel, and white horses. <clears throat> Okay, Midrash, in the night, I had a vision. Okay, there is a man on a horse standing in the myrtles. He is later referred to as the angel of the Lord, standing in the myrtles. The angel of the Lord alights upon and enters men, and my name, God, is in him and can speak through the man. Zechariah has an angel with him who is his guide in the vision. The deep is like a valley. Zechariah is looking down on, filled with myrtle trees, and then an open area. Below that is where the bay, sorrel, and white horses are. Verse 9, I asked, What are those, my lord? And the angel who talked with me answered, I will let you know what they are. Midrash. What are those, my Lord? Commentary. Zechariah is not talking to the angel that is with him, who answered, but who never lets him know what they are. He is asking the man standing among the myrtles on a bay horse about the horses in the open area and calls him my Lord. That's what Joshua did with the captain of the Lord's host. He fell to the ground and said, Oh my Lord, to the captain. Then the man who was standing among the myrtles spoke up and said, These were sent out by the Lord to roam the earth. Then the man who was standing among the myrtles Oh, answers the question of Zechariah, not the angel who was with Zechariah, and his question was asked to my Lord. I think I covered that twice. Verse 11, and in fact, they reported these horses to the angel of the Lord, who was standing amongst the myrtles. We have roamed the earth and have found all the earth dwelling in tranquility. Midrash. And in fact, they reported to the angel of the Lord. They who reported are the horses who have gone to and fro throughout the earth, and they spoke the report to the angel of the Lord, who was standing among the myrtles. The angel of the Lord, who was standing among the myrtles, has alighted upon and entered the man standing among the myrtles. The angel of the Lord is using this man as his visible presence, just as he wants to use a burning bush for his visible presence, and God spoke through him to Moses. Not just as his visible presence, he also used the man to say, These were sent out by the Lord to roam the earth, from verse 10. Verse 12. Thereupon the angel of the Lord exclaimed, O Lord of hosts, how long will you withhold pardon from Jerusalem and the towns of Judah, which you placed under a curse 70 years ago? This is, this is the answer that Rashi, uh, Rabbi Rashi was looking for. That's the question right there. What is it with this curse? Thereupon the angel of the Lord exclaimed, 
That's Midrash commentary. The angel of the Lord exclaimed through the man. Zechariah heard the words come from the man standing in the myrtles. It is the only way Zechariah could have heard the words. The angel of the Lord can only speak to the man he has alighted upon. Ezekiel describes this as a spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet and I heard what was being spoken to me by God and that was get up on your feet. Okay, this is from Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. I told you, you oftentimes have to combine these books for anything to make sense. And Rashi could make no sense of this. He had no idea of anything regarding the angel of the Lord. He had nothing on that. So, I profaned the Holy Spirit's eye, abandoned Jacob to prescription, and Israel to mockery. That would be God speaking. The profaning of the holy princess is God's prophecy of the banishment of King Jeconiah and all his offspring from ever ruling over Judah and Jerusalem again. The line of the kings of Judah ended. The line described king by king in the first book of the New Testament of Christianity, the line of Jesus. <clears throat> Isaiah 11 says the Spirit of God will live upon the twig of the shoot of the stump of Jesse. It's a stump because this ancestral tree was cut down. The only ancestral tree we have. Cut down. Jesus is not from the stump. He cannot be Moshe. He cannot be Messiah. And he most certainly is not the man described in Isaiah 53. Not even close. Um, I can't remember. The abandonment and mockery are God's prophecy that the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom of the Israelites would be defeated and deported from the promised land. Isaiah witnessed the deportation of the northern kingdom, but the deportation of the southern kingdom were many years after his death. This is Isaiah 43, verse 5 through 7. God speaking, Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your folk from the east, who will gather you out of the west. I will say to the north, Give back. And to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth who are linked to my name, who I have created, formed, and made for my glory. If you go to Isaiah 52, that's the return of all 13 tribes, the exiles, all 13. And that's clarified for sure in the book of Ezra. He says, the exiles gathered as one man. <laughs> I gotta fix my TV.